The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is literally a mountain range that divides the Atlantic Ocean into two, east and west. It extends uh, on its northern extent to just northwest of Greenland, and it goes all the way down almost into the Southern Ocean to about the same latitude as the southern tip of South America. Plates that form the surface of the Earth are splitting apart. The plates come apart, and the molten rock underneath it is coming up and that causes new crust of the Earth to be formed, and it pushes those plates apart. And that's what's created the Atlantic Ocean in the first place. It's like a line, it's like a zipper running all the way down the Atlantic, and that zipper is literally opening and being replaced by hot molten rock that binds to the edge of the crust, and so we're always making new seafloor. The southern part has actually been pretty well mapped and partly explored because of there's a lot of hydrothermal vent activity that takes place there. But north of the Azores, there's very, very little that we know. In fact, there are virtually no good bottom topography maps for more than 300 miles north of the Azores. And so this is one of the things that we're gonna be doing on this expedition, is trying to create some good maps. And once you have the maps and you have a better knowledge of the bottom, then that induces more exploration and asking questions about, well, oh, what will we find in this kind of habitat and that kind of habitat? So north of the Azores, very, very poorly explored. There has been work done previously here, but it's been hit and miss. It, it's been very sporadic, and it's been more of work of opportunity. So as a ship is transiting through here to get to another location, they might stop, they might do a little multi mapping, they might take a geological sample. But in terms of the number of dedicated expeditions just to exploring this area, it's really few and far between, so that makes it really exciting. In the deep sea, in these very specialized locations called hydrothermal vents, bacteria are feeding on energy from inside of the Earth, and they are becoming the base of the food chain for lots of other really interesting and endemic organisms. So we're really hoping that we can discover some hydrothermal vents. Um, so far as I know, there's only been one or two that have been discovered north of the Azores, and so this may be an opportunity to discover more. It's always exciting because we have some predictions of what we're gonna see, and very often they're upended. I think one of my most memorable views was on dive one when we were climbing uh, this slope that was um, a pile of coral rubble at first and it was kind of interesting to see all these dead coral skeletons but uh, perhaps a little bit depressing and wondering why we weren't seeing the live ones and then we came into this field of just brilliant yellow among this you know completely black deep sea and this field went on and on and on for tens and tens of meters agucha samia uh, stony coral uh, just a spectacular sight that i've never seen before one of the things that I, I really found most beautiful to me as a geologist was some of those b beautiful pillow formations we found and those beautiful pillow lobes, especially there was, there was one that we came across that looked like it had been just snaking down this small hill and it had gotten to a point where the, the outside crust had become too cold for it to continue. And then there was this beautiful breakout where the head of it had been fragmented and then this beautiful other pillow lobe pushed right out of it. And, and that was a textbook example of how those, those form and push forward. The other thing that I, I really appreciated was you know, having Scott here as a biologist. Uh, I haven't had this opportunity before to be side by side with someone in a completely different discipline and an expert in their own field and, and realizing this really beautiful, intricate, codependent relationship on the geology and the biology. These pillow lavas that we see provide homes and structures and, and little uh, refuges uh, to the biology. And then the biology also helps precipitate some of the weathering of, the, of those rocks. We found very high abundances, high density, high diversity, sessile communities, corals and sponges, all kinds of color, lots of abundance from the moment we hit the seafloor to the moment we left. And these are some of the places that we have some sense are down there, but we don't know for certain. We don't know exactly where they are. We're still trying to learn why do we see such communities in this place and not that place. Um, to see them is really important for conservation and management, knowing the places that perhaps we want to protect. These organisms are very long-lived, um, really exciting to get down there.